the astronauts to read out. Hi everyone, I'm Lee and this is NASA Now. Imagine you're traveling through space, let's say 200 times faster than a race car. When you reach your destination, you have to slow down to get your craft into orbit. You don't have any brakes and you don't have a lot of fuel, so what do you do? We'll learn the answer to that question and more, but first, here's what's happening at NASA now. There's new evidence that water exists on Saturn's moon Enceladus. NASA's Cassini spacecraft, which has been in orbit around Saturn since 2004, has discovered the best evidence yet of a large saltwater deposit beneath the surface of the giant planet's icy moon. The findings suggest a layer of water between the Enceladus rocky core and its icy mantle, possibly as deep as 80 kilometers beneath the surface. Scientists say this is a crucial finding because it shows that environmental conditions favorable to the emergence of life can be sustained on icy bodies orbiting gas giant planets. We've heard from other NASA Now guests that fuel is heavy and it takes up a lot of room on a spacecraft. So how do you slow down when you are going thousands of miles an hour without burning a lot of fuel? To find out, we're joined by Jill Prince, an aerospace engineer at the NASA Langley Research Center. Aerobraking is a process that we use to get an orbiter from a large elliptical orbit around a planet with an atmosphere to a smaller, more circular orbit so that the science can happen closer to the planet. If you had two very large arms and stuck them out the sides of your car windows, and if your arms were large enough, they could maybe slow down your car. And it's very much the same principle as what we use at Mars. The spacecraft have two very large arms, or solar panels, and they put them right into the flow of the wind so that they drag the spacecraft through the atmosphere. If you use thrusters, you're wasting a lot of fuel. So by using aerobraking, you don't have to take so much fuel and it reduces the size of the spacecraft that you're launching. In place of that fuel, you could always um, put on a couple of more science instruments. We learned so much from the scientific orbiters that we put around Mars that adding an instrument or two could really increase our knowledge of the planet. Absolutely, everyday decisions are made to whether or not you need a maneuver to keep that part that's closest to the planet from getting too hot or getting too far away from the planet. Aerobraking has been used at four different missions so far. The first one was Magellan at Venus, and the second, third, and fourth missions were all at Mars. The Mars Global Surveyor, the Mars Odyssey mission, and the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter mission. If you were going to design a mission for Venus, for example, um, the spacecraft would look a lot different than one for Mars because you're closer to the sun and when you fly through the atmosphere at Venus, for example, um, you're going to have to modify your spacecraft so that it can take those temperatures that you wouldn't have seen at Mars. It is a major challenge. You're starting with a spacecraft that enters the atmosphere at five or six kilometers per second, and you want to land it safely somewhere close to zero kilometers per second. So doing that for very large masses can be a problem. If you get too large, you run a risk of uh, heating on the spacecraft. So you have to design a system that can withstand the heating through that atmosphere, but be able to slow it down so it lands safely. The aerobraking process has taken three months at the shortest to six months at the longest so far. So it's a very long time of very intensive analysis, calculation, and trajectory simulation that will make sure that the orbiter is safe. They usually ask if I'm an astronaut, and the answer is no. They sometimes ask if I want to go to Mars, and the answer is yes. Um, I would love to see um, somebody step foot on the surface of Mars. I think that would be the, the greatest challenge to overcome in, in my generation's time. Did you know that the aerobraking technique was first tested by NASA's Magellan spacecraft orbiting Venus at the end of its prime mission in 1994? 
As the spacecraft slowed, it came closer and closer to the second planet from the sun and eventually crashed into the surface, giving scientists greater insight into Venus. Now you know. Now it's time to check out what's up. Look up in the night sky and you will see Mars, the fourth planet from the sun and one of the brightest planets in the sky. Soon, you'll be seeing a lot more of Mars as NASA sets its sights on future exploration of our nearest neighbor in the solar system. Aerobraking is all about friction, and where there's friction, there's heat, and where there's heat, there's need for protection. Check out this content module to create your own thermal protection system. In this lesson, your class will be able to develop a series of designs and structures to protect your spacecraft from the effects of direct heat. You can find this lesson on the NASA Explorer School's virtual campus. Well, that's it for NASA Now. Be sure to tune in next week when we crack the code that connects space travel to your favorite video game. We'll see you then on NASA Now. NASA Now comes to you from the virtual campus at NASA Explorer Schools.